the Vice President of the Kango Training Center. Kango Training Center is one of the sponsors of the World Bowling Coach Conference. He is also the head coach of Weber University, International University. And he's going to give you a presentation on how to build a championship team or program. So, so we don't lose any more time, Mr. Del Mar. Thank you. Communicates well with his players. That's a big one. 
He knows his players and maximizes his talent. Maximizes their talent, you know? Uh, talent, I think, is a little overrated sometimes, I can tell you that. A lot of the kids that start on our team are not the most talented. They just happen to be the hardest working uh, students. Boy, he gives and receives advice. Think about that one. He knows the history of the sport and the future and where it's going. And certainly at the Kegel Training Center, that was built for one reason, is to try to contribute to the sport ball. You know, John Davis is a visionary, and uh, there's now several training centers in the world, and you know, he, he had this vision. And uh, certainly when he was alive, we talked about the history of the sport a lot. And uh, certainly Randy and I are approximately the same age, and you know, so we get a chance to do that as well. And the great coach, I think, has to have vision. You always have to see the future before it happens and where we're going because things change. And I'll tell you what, I'm really proud of our team in this because they're a pretty humble bunch of kids. The way they behave, the way they win and lose is really important to us. And we're talking about team coaching here. So, um, you know, I wasn't so naive that when Weber came to us six years ago, I said, you know, okay, so we're going to get a bunch of people together, we're going to teach them how to bowl, we're going to take the eight best players, you know, by average, and boom, we're here we're going, we just add up the score, and if we're ahead at the end, we win. I wasn't that naive, but almost, <laughs> on what I was about to get into. I never had an idea of what a great responsibility and what we were about to work on. Herb Brooks, the coach that uh, coached uh, Team USA, the hockey team in 1980. I think that statement says it all. And bowling today, a lot of the athletes that we get have never played a team sport. And so bowling as an individual sport really teaches you how to be selfish. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that because you've got to kind of take care of your own. You, you know, it, it, it's not about, it's about you. And a lot of them have never played football, basketball, and baseball, and they've never been in a team environment. And when you get that, and you get mom and dad and say, you know who my son and daughter is, and they're not, they're on the bench, or they're not traveling, or they're doing extra whatever to get them better, and we're talking about sacrificing for the team. It is a foreign concept to them. And sometimes we just can't reach those kids and those parents, and they leave our programs. And that's a sad day. But this is a different environment, because when I grew up, we played every sport, and we didn't want to be inside. And today, there's a lot of stuff to do. You know, basketball season, we play basketball. Football season, we play football. And every street had its own team. That's what we did. And we played a lot of sports. Kids today, you know, we don't see it. We see some of that, of course, but a lot of them, have, this is their first time that they're actually playing a team sport. So we're talking about the millennials. Quite challenging generation. Companies all over the world now are spending millions and millions of dollars because they're entering the workforce and they're completely different cultures to teach their managers how to coach them. Not how to be their boss, how to coach them. Here are some of their characteristics. They are right. They are rewriting the rules, ladies and gentlemen. Because when they don't listen to coach, respectfully, they're trying to rewrite our program. That's what they're trying to do. No relevance of institutions. Boy, wasn't that John Davis? <laughs> they assume technology. Boy, they multitask fast. They're nurtured. Friends equal their family. Parents are much more involved. Right, coach? Sometimes, and not in a good way. <laughs> they are taught from the kid that they are special and vital. Unlimited about the attention of their success. This is the most planned generation in history. Parents have had their names picked before they even had sex to have kids. I'm not kidding you. They feel like they're entitled to the best of everything. Even if they don't put the work in, they don't feel like they have to pay the price. Not like the boomers and the generation before you start here, you work your way up. 
They want success now. They're very protected. They have gadgets. Um, they've been protected to stay away from harm much more than it, any of the other generations. They miss adapting to and learning from the mistakes and failures, and they're crushed if they fail or they don't get an act. First time they don't make our team, we, you know, when we had our first trial for Milwaukee, we, Randy and I, and, and Rick, we are on damage control mode. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't make the team to go to Milwaukee. That means my career is over. I got treated unfairly, I'm out of here. When achieving the American dream, they're very confident, believe that they can do anything. And boy, is that refreshing for somebody like us. They have a completely different outlook in life. But they forget that success doesn't come instantly. Interesting. And they think that success is linear. I'm going to go here, 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 here. This life's going to be wonderful. Very team oriented. They're the most interconnected generation. Emailing, texting, Facebook. I live on Facebook, if some of you haven't seen. And it's not so much because I like doing that part, but the only way I really communicate with these kids is by doing that. And of course, one of our coaches, players, put up an old one of my shows and picture of me. <coughs> that was kind of a hot one of turn. That was pretty fun. But that was nice to see that somebody of his age actually knew a lot about the past of the PPA players and, and where we came from. I thought that was a you know, pretty neat conversation that I had. Huge team instincts. And they love to stay connected with everyone all of the time. I mean, when they want to go to a restaurant, it's a it's, you know, text to the whole team. Hey, man, we're going to wherever. Hopefully not Taco Bell. <laughs> they do embrace some of the traditional values of their parents. They are much likely to get less to use drugs. They're closer ties with their parents. They're very close. Okay. Some of their, some of their uh, shared uh, interests are there, including, including music. And, again... They're very tight with their parents, which is good. Very family oriented. They are feeling more pressure to succeed, big time. School, everything. Get ready for a job, grades, stakes are high. Missteps have far bigger consequences. <coughs> and most of them are overwhelmed. Okay? Now, I would debate how hard they have it. <coughs> That's from the coach's perspective. They are focused on high achievement. They're trying to become the smartest generation in U.S. history. It's amazing how much they can do on a computer and how dumb I feel around them some of the time. They're influenced by their parents, as I said, and they seem to be very fragile. So my communication skills, Randy, on how we do this is really about who do I have in front of me and coach, I know you're about to be emotional, but you know, I really got to sit down and talk to this kid and I don't want to blow him out of the water because he might just run out of here and leave and I never see him again. Help them understand when you're trying to mentor them that the adversity is temporary, it's part of the path, it's part of the journey. Getting them better with some sort of a long-term process. This is part of the deal. And the training program, everything you do in training, you've got some kids that hate the gym. You have to remind them that why they're doing it. Not that I'm making them do it, but it's in their best interest. Not just how they feel, but how they're going to do it in school, and certainly how they're going to perform around better. And you can't get frustrated when they get distracted. Now, I can, but I can't show them that, you know? And even the fact that they really are bowling and bowling heaven, and they have it so good, in my opinion, come to the training center, be eight miles from the training center, have a small university where they get a lot of attention in class, they do get overwhelmed. And a lot of times they don't really see what's in front of them. And then we as coaches sometimes have to be a little more patient with that. you got to edutain. I know when I have spoken too much to them, because you can see they have tuned Del Horn out. And 
you've got to be short to the point. You've got to build entertainment. You've got to make it fun. You've got to make it challenging so that they stay engaged. Develop your parents and then allies. And I'll tell you what, we interview our parents now. We've learned the hard way. Trying to get this kid or that kid that's so talented to help us win a national championship. Our parents are a nightmare. And they post stuff on Facebook. And now we, we hold our parents just as accountable to the kids. The parents misbehave and make our program look bad. We will, we will suspend the kid. And that just happened this year. Where we, when we instituted a new rule, we just, uh, we did, there was a particular girl that ended up on our program, and we did not go after her. And she went to another university, transferred, and came knocking on our door, and Randy and I had to sit down and have a long discussion whether or not we wanted this young lady in our program. And we sat down, we were very honest with her about her parents' involvement, and said, listen, this is what they told, they used to talk, you know what, about our program before they came. Like, we really want them involved with us for four years. She turned around and called her dad and chewed him out. <laughs> she has been a model freshman this year on the latest team. She's done very well. Need structure. They will go off and do their own thing if you don't have training. Personalized training. They love relationships. Be prepared for high demands and high expectations. Okay? Lay it all out in front of them. But you've got to explain why. Why it's a benefit. Not just, this is what we do and you better do it. Consider mentoring in groups. Break it down to specific goals. And they, they respond very well to personal attention. And if they achieve something as minor as you think it is, you need to tell them. They love that. They crave it. You know, somebody gets their ball speed down, all of a sudden to the range that we've been working on, and repeat it ten times on cast, man, I'm on it. Great job. And tell them why. So when you're starting a team, or you're on a team, what is your team culture? What do you stand for? What do you want to be? What is the message that you preach every day? The first is the cumulative deposit of knowledge, experience, beliefs, values, and attitudes. Our team culture is posted all over the training center in the locker room. All the same, everything that we stand for. All the quotes from our players. It's in front of them every single day. And we're an NAIA uh, group. A, uh, we're part of the, that particular college program. Matter of fact, my team is actually, right now as we speak, going for the NAIA National Championships. And JJ, John Janowitz, is taking the team along with Gary Faulkner. And of course, Coach Randy and Katie's with the women's team. So, of course, I'm watching my Facebook. Yeah. Um, but this is um, the program that we run. It, uh, it's called the Champions of Character. We as coaches have to get certified in this, and we just adopted this. These different, the integrity, respect, responsibility, sportsmanship, and servant leadership. The kids also have to go through the program, and they also have to take a test. So we have a saying called the Weber Way. If you see me on Facebook and our kids, we, uh, we talk about the Weber Way all the time. What is it? First, we're going to be patient and present. What does it mean to be present? That means whatever we're doing, you're here 100% in the deal. You're not on your phone. You're not talking to your friends. Whatever we're doing, we are here. Strive for excellence. I think there was a very famous coach says, we're going to try to be perfect, and we'll never get there, but along the way, we will achieve excellence. I think it was Vince Lombardi, showing my age. And constant learning. That's why I'm here. I'm taking as many notes as I can. I'm trying to get better. I want to hear from all the speakers. And I certainly, that's why we have most of our team here. Positive, enthusiastic, no matter what. And I can tell you some of those matches uh, <clears throat> look pretty dire for us in the last week. Then down, and man, our attitude sometimes has just pulled us out. Just staying positive, staying in the moment, staying competitive. The team is first. 
Everything's about the team, including the coach. Coach is in first, team is first. And along the way, you're going to absolutely have a blast. They keep me young, let me tell you. Right, coach? It's, it's hysterical. It's almost, uh, I get to drive the boys' bus, you know, when we land or when we drive somewhere. So you can imagine in the boys' bus and their college students what the conversations are like. <laughs> Pretty fun. <laughs> so everything we do is about March and April right now. We just won our section. We're going in. We're going to intercollegiate championships. We got a great chance to do it all again. We really do. Tough teams this year. Um, I think there's at least six or seven teams that can win it outright. And we're going to have to absolutely be our best. After we won our section, I told our team, I said, and Dr. Dean, I said, we got two more belts. We got to go up in order to be our best. How are we going to do it? Women just had the highest score in the country, men or women, and we got to get we got we got to get those extra two gears. Where are the areas that we're going to improve? Because it's going to be tough. <coughs> this was a monumental date in the history of our program. This was we started our program April 18, 2008, and we bowled Coach Vatican's team on this date. It was our first national champion. Sure. The best college team of Josh Blanchard and Serbinski, that's the best team I've ever seen. We were a bunch of wild, enthusiastic, mostly from South America team, very energetic. We bowled these guys in the semifinals and we beat them. They promptly won another match and came back and whipped our butts two times. And we finished third. But that match right there said something. And that was kind of a validation of the work that we did. It said, you know what, we can do this at this level. Because that team was an awesome team. I think they won uh, Zerbinski, two national, back to back national championships coach. Um, and, uh, you know, what's funny in 2012, when both teams won the national championship, I was at the Ebonite event, Bowl Expo. And I went through, and Ebonite's our sponsor. No one said hi or anything, we were just kind of going through the thing. And the first guy that came out of nowhere was Josh Blanchard and said, nice job, congratulations. He shook my hand, gave me a big hug, and I remembered that. That was pretty cool. I mean, this guy had as, as storybook college career as you could have, and he came off and saw me and just, you know, because we'd had some pretty tough battles and some great matches. I thought that was pretty cool that he respected us enough. So there's Coach Burst, the, we call that the Stoffman Huddle. It's Coach for Randy Stoughton, and when we bowl on television, we stay in a huddle. And the first year that they started, the second year, they won the national championship. Pretty significant moment. I know it's the best thing that uh, mm -hmm. has ever happened to Randy. He loves other girls, and uh, he's quite challenged by them. Um, and uh, it's really nice to see. Uh, how humble he has become. Because if you know Randy, he's got a pretty big bark. And those girls have got him wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit about uh, in five years, we won including the NI five national championships and some of the success of the women and the men. A lot of hard work, uh, a lot of different teams, a lot of mistakes, a lot of craziness. <laughs> And that uh, young lady you see jumping up right there, that's my wife. <laughs> I got to make sure I recognize her. That was the moment that we won the title. I was still in, I was crying at that point. I couldn't move. And this gentleman, who's the assistant coach right now, uh, Gary Faulkner, he had thrown a stride. He didn't know he won. So he turned around and the whole team jumped on him and scared the you-know-what out of him. Because <laughs> he thought he needed another stride. Of course, our individual achievements, we, uh, we celebrate that in Marcelo Schwartz and Stephanie from Brazil winning, won many medals and of course Diana won the Queens this year. Pretty special for our program and uh, she's been just, um, since her freshman year, a model athlete. Something you want to, you know, aspire to be. And of course, we are nuts, we're crazy. So, life expectancy of the team is about eight months. In the next year, it's 
the whole new team. Even if one player changes, even if no players change, the kids are a year older, their personalities will change, and it's a different deal. It's amazing. So in their words, different countries, same language, fun, energetic, champions, the best atmosphere for bowlers, educational fun, we're close family, positive, great chemistry, we are like family, supportive, motivated, learning, again, family. And this year, I love this from last year, the name is 40 faces, one team. Wow. Expectations and actions. They got to match up. And this is part of the edgy training thing you have to do with these kids. So if they want to get here, my job is to show you the way, but I can't do the work for you. But I can certainly show you the path. Starts with the first practice. First practice is critical. You set the bar right away. First day. You've got to have a consistency of message. Regardless of who you're talking to, including you, your star player or player. Coaches must apply to the rules as well. How about that? So, if we're talking about sugar consumption, which I'm going to show you a little bit about our nutritional plan, you know, coach can't be sitting there eating a piece of pie at practice. And here I'm on top of somebody about his diet. They can't do that. We can't do that. I lose credibility. They're smart kids. They're right on top of it. You know, there's a letter written by John Wooden to uh, Wooden, uh, 1965 basketball team, probably the greatest coach, team coach of all time, talking about that the team can't, because of controversy and uh, <coughs> conflict, that they have to stay together as a team. And that's what this is about. It's about keeping your team together, getting them to focus on a goal, and getting them all to move to the same direction. I get this asked all the time. So who are we looking for? Will you take my kid? I got three rules. Passionate about bowling. They can't just like bowling if they want to come to Weber, because they will hate it. Because we work our tails off. Right? Coachable. That's a big one. And I don't really want to do that. Try it like this. Nah, I don't like to do that. I, I tried that at home. Hmm. And we expect you to give 100% every day. Those are my three rules. Don't say anything about talent, does it? So we figure we got a holistic program. We talk about team culture development, knowledge and education, then we go to skill development, team life play, mental game, and fitness and conditioning. It's the whole deal. You can't just do physical. You can't just teach them how to put a ball in ball. If it was that easy, there'd be a lot better, a lot more better. <coughs> it's the whole deal. Everything you do matters. Dr. Dean says it all the time. Everything you do matters. The skill development is pretty easy, by the way. The rest of it is kind of tough. <laughs> So now we're getting rock and roll on here a little bit, and most of the kids today are not as fit as we were. They don't play ball, they didn't ride their bikes, and they're much more susceptible to injury when they come to our program because we bowl a lot. A lot. And they train a lot. And I let these guys um, do a functional movement test first, and usually they got some issues. And before they're allowed to come to practice, Number one, I need to know what they are, how far I can push them, and number two, we've got to get those, uh, I need to talk to the trainer and find out if the, the parts that are not functioning up to speed, how soon can we get them 100%? Like uh, stiffness in hamstrings, uh, the uh, hip flexors, um, if those aren't operating very much, I'm going to have a back problem or a knee problem every single time, I guarantee you. So I don't touch them until they go through this. And I get a plan. And thanks, uh, we got you know Weber International University, 700 kids. I got a lot of support from the, the fitness group and the trainers. They love the bowling team. They're really hard working. They've got to go through this test. A lot of them that come here, believe it or not, can't do a push-up and a pull-up. 
Now they're going to hold 50, 60 cans a week. So then we do orientation. And it's mostly for the freshmen and the new parents. And we're going to set up our year. First day orientation sets the expectation, outlines the season, what is our culture and what is our process. We're very specific. This whole thing takes about two hours. What are our goals for the season? We actually go over what happened last year and the things that we've learned. We also go over the changes that we made and why from the previous year to the new year. Because we make changes every year. Okay? We set up player accountability and we introduce everybody to the team portal, which we have a Yahoo account. And I want the parents to, I want to be completely transparent in what we're doing. Um, everything that I want the parents to see what we're doing, all the messages, including the stern ones. The chats. Not too long. Our academic expectations, the student athlete must have a 2.5 GPA each semester to qualify for the travel team. This is, as far as I know, the highest expectation of college bowling. We decided to do this because we wanted the kids to focus on their GPA. There, there might be somebody else out there. I don't know of one. Um, I get probably once every two years a parent will say, you need to lower this standard for my kid because of the background and this and that and the other. And my, you know, my response to that, number one, is number one, we want to, we want to push your son or daughter and so that they become a good student and they work hard. That's why, really, they're coming. And number two, maybe you're not right for our program. You know? And that's okay. So it's not an arrogant statement. It just is every parent and their son or daughter has to decide what their experience is going to be in college. What do I want my four or five or six years to look like? And that's what I tell every kid. And it may not be our program. It may be somewhere else that they feel more at home and they will abide by those rules and, and whatever the expectation of that program is. Some of it could be demographic. Sometimes they want to live in a big city where it's cold. I don't get that, but that's their decision. It was pretty much 70 degrees all winter in Florida, and you know what it was like in the winter you know, this year in our country. So. Then the next thing we do is we do a grip check. And Ramon Hilfring uh, is a freshman. He's been training. He's from uh, the Netherlands. Been training with us since he was 14 years old. He's an incredible baller, an incredible person. Um, and we tried two grips with him along with his regular grip. And, you know, the first part of the season he bowled okay, but he would throw a couple of shots a game that were like, you know, where did that come from? And he would come back and look at his thumb like that, like he can't see it. And so we dynamically fit him. I just want to show you. This is the first fit, which was 11 degrees of tilt, and he was about, he was 350 RPMs. And his current fit was in range. It's just, when you watch bowlers bowl long enough, you just can see, you know, it's not quite the way it should be. All right? So then we made some changes, some minor changes. We lengthened the span of 30 seconds, changed his pick, finger pitches and his thumb pitch just a little bit. And then, next slide, he, got up, he went up 30 RPMs. And the ball motion was drastically different. Not only that, but his catch got tremendously better. And he could do more tricks to the ball consistently. Now, not everybody we get is at his skill level only this freshman with his bowling acumen. However, if they're going to bowl that many games and you're going to be making changes to their physical game, they better have a grip that allows them to bowl some games with the least amount of stress to the body that they can repeat. So everybody goes to fit checks. And most of the time when they're 17, 18, 19 years old, we're going to do at least two a year.